Well, hi there. In our video about the geckos, I said that the geckos, with nearly 2,000 species, are one of the most successful groups of lizards. And that is because the snakes, which fall right into the middle of the lizard clade, have twice as many species, almost 4,000 described. And these nearly 4,000 species fall into more than 20 families, most of which you've never heard of before. And these are the true snakes. We're not even talking about the two dozen other lizard lineages that have no legs that people often ask why they're not snakes. And the reason that they're not snakes is because they're not as closely related to snakes as they are to the other lizard groups. There are a suite of snake features that can be used to distinguish between snakes and other lizards. Even other lizards with reduced or absent limbs, like this European legless lizard. These features include the presence of belly scoots, an unfused mandible and a highly kinetic skull, a forked tongue, a fused, immobile, transparent eyelid called a brill or spectacle, a lack of external ear openings, a long body and a comparatively short tail, and a lack of a sternum connecting the ribs on the ventral side of the animal. Other groups may have some of these features, but none other than the snakes possess them all, or even the majority of these features all on the same individual. But the combination of these features has resulted in the single most successful, at least in terms of the number of species, group of lizards on the planet. And they're found almost everywhere, except for Antarctica and a few islands. I mean, even out in the ocean. So how many snake families are there? A lot. Certainly more than 20, and given the number of species, there is still a lot for us to understand. So take the exact number and the relationships with a grain of salt. But let's dig in, because I suspect most of us can name fewer than 10 families of snakes, and that means we have a lot to learn. The snakes, suborder Serpentes, are, as we mentioned, nested right in the middle of the lizards, which are in the order Squamata. The Serpentes are themselves divided into two large clades, the Scoliocophidia and the Alethinophidia. The Scoliocophidia contains five families of weird fossorial snakes, and the Alethinophidia contains all the rest of the snakes, including the ones that you can probably name. So let's start with the Scolicophidia, since it is a comparatively small and very weird group. And these are generally small and weird snakes, so, uh, you know, it seems appropriate. In general, members of this clade, which may be paraphyletic, are known as blind or thread snakes. They can get up to about three and a half feet, or about one meter, but many are much smaller than that. The main unifying feature of these blind snakes is that they are quite visually impaired. Not only do they have reduced eyes, but their spectacle is opaque. This probably doesn't matter much since they live underground, and they probably just use their eyes to detect if they are still safely in the dark, or if they have accidentally emerged into the horror that is broad daylight where death is around every corner. The five families in this clade are the Animalipididae, the Leptotyphlopidae, the Gerhopilidae, the Xenotyphlopidae, and the Typhlopidae. The Anomalipididae, the most distantly related of the five, is found in Central and South America. They are mostly under a foot in length, and many species have a single tooth in their lower jaw. Let's call him Brian. The next most distantly related family are the Leptotyphlopidae, which are found in the Americas, North and South, Africa, and Asia. This is another family that stays small. The smallest snake in the world is actually in this family. They have non-mobile, toothless upper jaws and crania, much less mobile than most snakes. The next most distantly related family would be the Gerhopilidae. These are found in Southern Asia and the South Pacific. They can be identified by the gland-like structures that they have on their head scales. The two most closely related families in this clade are the Xenotyphlopidae and the Typhlopidae. The Xenotyphlopidae are made up of just two families of snakes from Madagascar known as Malagasy blind snakes. 
They can be identified by a huge, almost circular, shield-like scale at the front of their face called a rostral shield. Also, they have no eyes and are pink. Let's just say that if you're in Madagascar and you find a dry worm with scales and a shield for a face, well, you'll know what you have. The Typhlopidae are found in the tropical regions of every continent except for the one without any tropical parts, as well as many islands all over the world. These guys have teeth in their upper jaws, but lack basically all of the head flexibility of most snakes, so they can only feed on very small prey. I'd like to pause from snakes, you know, with this legless lizard here, for just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon, who have made it possible for us to really dive into this new format of videos. You guys have responded in such a positive way that we now can move forward with this format, but that has only been thanks to the support that we've received from Patreon. If you'd like to join with them in supporting us in making amazing new kinds of content and just exploring the boundaries of what we can do on this channel, please consider checking it out. There's also a lot of really cool features for you to receive as one of our patrons. So, it, you know, it's worth a little exploring. And that takes us to the Althenophidia which are, if not less weird, at least more familiar. And that makes sense because there are, you know, at least like 20 families in this clade distributed around the world, and most of them live above ground, like we do. Within this clade, the most distantly related from all the rest appear to be the snakes of the clade Amerophidia. The Amerophidia contains two families which you might not think are closely related, but no matter how we build the phylogeny, it keeps coming back that they are one another's closest relatives. First is the single species family Anileidae, the American pipe snake. This is a long, skinny, small-headed South American snake with red and black bands, leading them to be called false coral snakes. But unlike most long, skinny, small-headed snakes, they have vestigial hind limbs called spurs. Their head and eyes are also fairly similar to the blind and thread snakes. And because their jaws are not very flexible, they tend to eat things that are easy to swallow, like other snakes, cassilians, and amphisbanids. Unlike the scoliocophidian snakes that all lay eggs, these guys are ovoviviparous, meaning that they retain the eggs internally until they hatch. Their closest relatives, members of the family Tropidophidae, on the other hand, look at a glance a heck of a lot more like boas than they do like American pipe snakes. These are found in the Americas from Mexico down into South America and all over the Caribbean islands. Like their closest relatives and the boas that they resemble, they have vestigial hind limbs and give birth to live young. They also have the ability to change color from light to dark, which is pretty neat. When threatened, they coil into a tight ball like a ball python, or voluntarily bleed from their eyes, mouth, and nose like someone possessed by a demon. The next most closely related clade are the Europeltoidea. This clade contains three families, the family Europeltidae, the shield tails, and the families Anomochilidae and Cylindrophiidae, the dwarf and Asian pipe snakes. The family Europeltidae, found in India and Sri Lanka, are another fossorial group of snakes with reduced eyes and relatively inflexible heads. Unlike the blind and thread snakes, they do not have a brill at all, but their eyes are covered with polygonal shields. Unlike the Amerophidia, they don't have any vestigial limbs, but they do have a two-pointed shield at the end of their tails, hence the name shield tails. Being fossorial and with relatively inflexible heads, they seem to eat primarily earthworms and other things that are small and easy to swallow. Similar to Amerophidia, they are ovoviviparous, retaining the eggs until hatching. The family Anomochilidae, the dwarf pipe snakes, contains three species from West Malaysia and Sumatra. Not much is known about them. They're small, up to about 20 inches, they probably are fossorial, given their head and eye structures. They probably lay eggs. They do have some reduced hind limbs. Really, more is known about their closest relatives, the Asian pipe snakes, from the family Cylindrophiidae, named for their cylindrical bodies, hence the name pipe snakes. 
Asian pipe snakes are found all over Southern Asia and the nearby islands. They tend to be dark with bright blotches and have bright banded ventral patterns that are revealed as part of their defensive displays. They do possess spurs. They are semi-fossorial, and as a result, they have more developed eyes and more skull flexibility than most of the snakes we've discussed so far. Some species get a bit larger, up to about 34 inches, but many are pretty small. Though their more flexible skulls allow them to eat larger prey than most of the families we've talked about so far, they eat using this strange rotational motion that I don't yet totally understand, as opposed to the pterygoid walk we explained in this video. As a result, they still tend to feed on tube-shaped prey. Pipe snakes eat other pipes. Even though we are quite a ways into this more familiar clade of snakes, we really still haven't gotten to anything all that familiar. And that is because the three remaining clades contain basically all of the snakes you have probably seen before. You may have also noticed that the overwhelming majority of the snakes we have discussed so far have legs. Only two of the remaining three clades have legs. Usually I say that snakes don't have legs unless they do. I should probably start to say about snakes the same thing that I usually say about the rest of the lizards. They have legs unless they don't because almost all of the snake clades have legs. So let's talk about the two-legged clades first. These would be the Pythonoidea and the Booidea. While both of these lineages have legs, that doesn't mean that they are one another's closest relatives. The reality is that we are still struggling to determine which two of these three remaining clades are most closely related. The Boidea contains the family Boidae, the true boas, as well as the families Calabariidae, Candoeidae, Carinidae, Eurysidae, and Sanzinidae. These are considered by some to be their own families, but they're often simply included as subfamilies in the Boidae. This is one of those places where there's a lot of room for study, you know, if you're looking for a PhD project somewhere. But the Boids, despite being one of the best-known families of snakes, only comprise a few dozen species. We could probably cover them all in one video, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. They're found mostly in the Americas and the Caribbean, though there are a few species in Africa, Madagascar, Europe, Asia, and the Pacific Islands. So though I tend to think of them as an American group, they do have some representation on all of the continents with snakes, except for Australia. Probably a cool story there we would get into if we did a full video on just the boas. Again, if you're into that kind of thing. This family includes many well-known snakes like anacondas, boa constrictors, rainbow boas, sand boas, dumerals boas, rosy boas, rubber boas, and tree boas. Not to mention the largest snake ever discovered, the titanoboa. And though the titanoboa is now extinct, the heaviest of all living snakes, still a boa, the green anaconda. So what they lack in numbers, they make up for, in many cases, by being large and spectacular. Like almost all of the snake families that we have discussed so far, they do have vestigial hind limbs. The main group with which they are likely to be confused would be the Pythonoidea. Though there are some dental and skeletal elements that you could examine, the easiest ways to identify them would be by their babies and their heat pits if they have them. Boas, unlike pythons, generally give live birth, though there are a few species that have re-evolved oviparity, you know, just to wreck our day. Additionally, where present, the heat pits, called labial heat pits as they're positioned on the lips, are located between the scales, whereas they're located on the labial scales of pythons. The Pythonoidea, like the Boidae, contains only a few dozen species that could be covered in their entirety in a single video, if you're into that kind of thing. The majority fall into the family Pythonidae, but there are a few that fall into the families Loxosemidae and Xenopeltidae. The true pythons, the family Pythonidae, unlike the Boas, are found in Australia. They're also found in Africa and Asia. Only recently have they established themselves in the Americas, and that is mostly the Burmese pythons in southern Florida. There is a species commonly referred to as the Mexican python. Mexico being, you know, in the Americas. 
but it is not a pythonid. The family Pythonidae contains the longest snake in the world, the reticulated python, as well as many other well-known species such as ball pythons, tree pythons, womas and black-headed pythons, blood pythons, carpet pythons, just to name a few. And again, I'd be happy to cover them all in the future if you're into that kind of thing. Getting back to the American python, they do exist, they just aren't in the family Pythonidae. They are, however, very closely related. They are the only species in the family Loxosemidae. So there is an American member of the Pythonoidea, it just isn't a Pythonid. The other family in the Pythonoidea are the sunbeam snakes of the family Xenopeltidae. These are from Southeast Asia. In a lot of ways, these guys resemble the last group of snakes we have to cover, the Xenophidia. This in that they lack hind limb vestiges. Also, like many members of the Xenophidia, they have large, rounded head scales. They're also very, very iridescent. This makes them a popular target for pet snakes, but they generally do terribly, like dragon snake level terribly in captivity. And that gets us to the biggest clade of snakes, the legless snakes in the clade Xenophidia. Despite the fact that the overwhelming majority of all the clades we have discussed so far have possessed legs, this clade comprises about 80% of all known snakes. That's probably why we tend to think of snakes as not having any legs. This clade includes two main lineages, the Acrocordoidea and the much larger Colubroides. The Acrocordoidea contains only one extant family, the family Acrocordidae. These are from Southern Asia, Indonesia, Australia, and other islands in between. But what the family Acrocordidae may lack in diversity, it more than makes up for in extra skin and weirdness. These are the wart, file, and elephant trunk snakes, and they are a weird baggy aquatic group. They basically look like an anaconda that shed into its five-year-old skin when it was only two. So much skin. It's just a long aquatic lychee, except where lychees are soft, these guys are very rough for holding the fish on which they prey. They also have no belly scoots. There might be a reason they were on our list of five of the weirdest pet reptiles you could get. The Colubroides, on the other hand, are probably what you think of when you think about snakes. They're found on every continent, except Antarctica, and even out in the ocean blue. And they are honestly such a huge group that I'm going to give them their own video, because they deserve it. So if you don't already subscribe to this channel, do so now, and, and click the little bell, because you don't want to miss that. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Is it right side Let's see, can we get a, a paper towel, because I... Yep. It's just water bowl water, if that... Ooh, Makes you okay. feel any better about the world? I mean, yeah. That's where they poop, I was right? gonna ask. That is where they poop. Jason, come on. In their water bowl? Yes. Yeah. Ideally not. I tend I change it pretty fast when they do. Wouldn't be the first time. Don't act like you've never pooped in a glass of water that you were drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't judge. <laughs> and I apologize, my voice is a little bit shot after today, so if it cracks just We'll just start over like it's high school, okay? When threatened, they coil into a tight ball like a ball python, or voluntarily bleed from their eyes, mouth, and nose like someone possessed by a demon. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know how that's helpful. <laughs> Might dissuade me. <laughs> yeah, you were gonna take a bite out of it. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, know. whoa, something's wrong here. <laughs> I don't know everything about everything, but I know that shouldn't be. El Diablo! Yeah, El Diablo! No lo voy a comer! <laughs> because many of you are familiar with Cobra Kai. But do you know Cobra Kai? <laughs> well, but they still see. They're, they're kind of like the cool guys that come into the, to a, a building and have their sunglasses on the whole time. You Indoors. Know? Indoors. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to make sure Karen knows. <laughs> is that if you're ever in an accident and it looks like you will have lost your vision, that you will want your eyes scooped out of your head. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<lacht> ja. <lacht>